right. So, 88, get out of here. 88, what does that mean? It's just two numbers, eight and eight. 88, 86 is when you're thrown out of something. So I was in this arena two years ago doing a video at 86. And I said, I've been thrown out, but I'm still here. I thought I was thrown out, but I'm still here. Three years ago in 2020, I was diagnosed with a terrible autoimmune system mess up from an overdose that I was given in Australia for another problem. But anyway, here I am at 88. I don't think any of the doctors thought I would make it to 88. But I have to go to the hospital ever so often. And I'm here for you with Chrome. And Chrome never worked a cow during the time between 86, my age 86, and 88. And I think I only rode him two, three, maybe four times maximum. And only just to walk, trot, and canter because I was of the opinion that if I can't walk, then I'm gonna fall down, and I can't walk very well at all. I'm very unsteady, but it's amazing what I'm learning about the fact that our bodies learn. And when I sit in that saddle, I'm the steadiest that I've been in 10 years. It's just, I can go where it goes. I don't know what it is all about, but I have CIDP and you can look it up if you want. It's a horrible thing. But all my professors in the universities, I have two doctorates in behavioral sciences, animal and human. And all my doctors said that horses are just unintelligent animals. They're flight animals and they just flee the predators and they stay alive, but they're not intelligent at all. Well, he won six championships. He's 19 years old, but he won his last championship at four years of age. And I took him off the road and made him my horse. And I just rode him. And remember that I was traveling half the year for all those years that he was an adult horse. But every time I got on him, he remembered what I wanted him to do. And if you don't think so, watch this. Pat and I have come down and I've ridden him twice in the last week. Yes, he gets exercised. He goes on the walker and Pat rides him ever so often. I ask her to ride him so he gets, you know, feeling a rider on in the saddle and stuff. But a minimal amount of time. And the last cattle he worked in competition was 16 years ago, maybe 15 years ago. And when I rode him at 86, I thought he won't even remember how to work a cow. And we have footage of him at 86 working as well as he did when he was four. It's unbelievable. I could hardly ride him. I have to hang on to the horn and keep my old body up there. And I just got these cattle. Jerry Williams, Jerry Williams is from an old family of cattle people here in the San Inez Valley in California. Jerry Williams is the nicest guy and he brought me cattle for my 86, that's two years ago. He brought me cattle here three or four head, and we did a thing, and he was amazing. And he just brought some, he brought four this time back again. And they seem to be wild. We put them in the pen here, and they seem to be very wild, so we'll see. I don't know what, whether we'll get it done or not. But it won't be his fault if we don't, because he remembers. And Her Majesty is gone now. But she told me, teach as many people as possible to have a horse come to the mounting block 
so you can get on because she had a lot of trouble getting on her horses and when she saw how I trained a horse to come to the mounting block it changed the world and people are learning it all over the world but every time we show it people call and say oh I didn't see that before and they say it's amazing so I'm just going to do it again just for the sake of showing you that horses don't forget he's sound and he loves doing his work. Okay, so I'm just going to walk around here. This line is 30 feet long. So I'm going to just walk around here and put him somewhere about 30 feet or so from that mounting block. What's he going to do? He's going to come to the mounting block and he's going to turn sideways so I can get on easy. And then he's not going to run away with me. He's going to take a step back before he goes to work for me. I can barely get up here, but I'll give it a try. And then I just cluck to him. And let's see what he does. Get nice and close for me. Good boy. That's a good boy. Is that amazing or not? Horses, they tell me, don't have much intelligence. And I've had a lot of professors tell me that they don't remember anything. They remember everything. And they have intelligence that we don't even know about. It's absolutely incredible how intelligent horses are. Now my stirrup is right there. Whoa, don't run away from this old man. 88 years old. And I have to have you stand here for me while I get on. And don't walk away. Don't walk away. And take a step back. Like that. And then you can walk forward. Holy moly. Can you believe this horse is 19 years old now, and he has a lot of energy, as you will see when the cattle are in here. He has an amazing amount of energy. Where is all that energy going here? Just to his brain to tell him, this is what I'm supposed to do, so I do it. And uh, he scolds me if I don't do it, so I, I do it. And what we're gonna do here today for my 88th birthday is talk quite a bit before we work the cattle about my life and what has happened with this life of mine because so many miracles have happened and Jerry Williams is one of those miracles that brings me cattle when I want to do this from the, one of the oldest families and his grandfather helped me immeasurably when Pat and I were becoming the owners of this farm instead of just the designers of it and the managers of it. His grandfather. His father and I were close and they're both dead now and Jerry brings me the cattle. And Pat and I have had this farm and we produce champion after champion here. And it's unbelievable how the Jacobs family from Bremen, Germany picked up on my work through John Gosden, a trainer in Newmarket, who's still training and one of the best in the world. And Gosden said, you take Lomitas, the best young horse you have, to Monty Roberts and get him fixed. They're gonna, they banned him from racing worldwide. And he said, you get Monty Roberts to come and work with that horse. He's too good a horse to waste like this. So I get a call from a man that speaks almost no English. It's uh, the German was hard for me to understand. And I go over there and 10 days after I arrived, he raced and won and became horse of the year in Germany and produced champion after champion, including Silvano who was six times the leading sire of South Africa. It's been a fantastic thing. I worked for them for 26 years, two to three months a year, making all the decisions for their horses. 
and we produced in 26 years 52 champions of racing for Europe. It's incredible. And when I got back here, in the middle of all of this, another thing happened. But before that happened, trainers here in California were bringing trainers here to have a barbecue and there was no way to look in my round pens. There's solid walls. So they stacked alfalfa bales up and put the trainers up on the alfalfa bales for me to start young horses, first saddle and first rider. Farrell W. Jones and Charles Whittingham were the primary people putting that together. And they brought in some journalists. Two journalists wrote stories for magazines about the things they saw in that round pen. And those two magazines wound up on the desk of Queen Elizabeth II. And Queen Elizabeth read both stories and gave them to her horse manager, Sir John Miller, and said, read these two stories, come back and tell me what you think. He comes back, he throws the magazines down, and he says, hogwash. It's a fake. There's a trick to it somewhere. You can't do horses like that. Horses won't understand that. It's ridiculous. And she said, well, one of these journalists lives in Florida and one in California, and I happen to know that's 3,000 miles apart, and they both wrote the same story. So you tell me, how does this happen? I'm going to buy you a ticket. I'm going to send you to California. There's miracle after miracle. The man that he knew in California lived six miles from me. He didn't know where to find me. The guy that lived six miles from me knew where to find me, so he brought Sir John Miller here. And I did three horses for him in one day. And he stopped with his big car up by our house and said, I think the queen is going to want to see this. What are you doing in April? That would be April, April of 1989, because he was here in October of 88. And I went there. And the queen had 23 horses, never saddled, never ridden. And I did them in five days, averaging about 29 minutes per horse. And she said, you have to take this to the world, Mr. Roberts. Monty, she called me. Monty, you have to take this to the world, the queen said. And I want a book. And I want you to go to as many countries as you can I've dreamed about horses being trained with no violence. I've seen enough violence to horses, and I don't like it, and I love what you're doing. I was with Her Majesty for 33 years, and during that 33 years, I went to 41 countries with my principles, my concepts, 3,300 horses. No failures. None. No failures. Two minor injuries where they skinned their leg on the fence or something. That's, that's just not possible. It's a miracle. 3,300 horses. Her Majesty put my work to the world and caused the world to accept my work. There is no question that Her Majesty took my work to the world. And with her influence, the world is changing dramatically away from violence in training horses. And back here in the United States, a man by the name of Johnson. And I, I was told that William B. Johnson of Tennessee said, if it's good enough for the Queen, it's good enough for me and spoke with his manager, who was watching what was going on. And his name is Marty Irby. And Marty Irby, the manager, gave me a call and said, we want you to come back here. We're going to put a group together to come and see our Tennessee walking horses, which receive an enormous amount of violence in the breaking process and getting them ready to show in competition. And I went back there. And Marty Irby's family was in that Tennessee walking horse business. And they had to do what they do in that business. But Marty Irby watched me 
in the round pen with some young horses. And he said, wait a minute, we don't have to do the violence that we're doing. And he started to move against that violence along with Mr. Johnson. But his family failed him and they wanted, ah, that's their business. And friends all around him in Tennessee were very upset with Marty Irby's decision to shake violence from the world of Tennessee walking horses. So, Mr. Johnson died. Marty Irby moved to Washington to become an advocate for nonviolence with horses and has been an advocate now for about eight years or so and is a good friend, contacts me. Recently we were together for a movie which is being fair with Mustang horses in the United States. But Marty Irby's not just responsible for Tennessee walking horses or Mustangs. He's responsible for how human beings, particularly those that we have in our government back there in Washington, to say these things are not right and these things are right and we want to do the right thing by the horses. And he's here now, Marty Irby is, to encourage me to keep up working with my horses in, non in a nonviolent way. I'm 88. How can I keep up this business of working with nonviolence at 88? I'm keeping up with it. And whatever God lets me have, that's what I'm going to do. Now, these trainers, Pat and I had horses here that went on to be horse of the world. One of them twice, alleged. He won the Arc de Triomphe back to back. I bought him. Pat and I had him here. We sold him. He went to Ireland to Vincent O'Brien, one of the best trainers in the world and was horse of the world twice. And I could go on and on about the horses that were in Australia and New Zealand, United States, Canada, South America too. Violence is not necessary. And here's a horse that's been retired for 15 years. He's 19 years old and I retired him at four years of age. He doesn't forget what to do, and I don't have to demand him to do anything. You're going to see it. I don't know. I have confidence that he'll still know what a cow is. But it's been two years since he worked here in this pen for my 86th birthday. And I just the other night happened to tell Pat, you know, for 88, I should do 88. And if I look back at it, I did a tour of the world at 80. And I had an idea at home. I was doing my exercises and I had an idea. I made a push-up board that could go down in the dirt here. A plywood push-up board. And I went all over the world, 80 at 80. 80 push-ups at 80 years of age. And I did them. I never failed one time, and the audiences loved it. So, I'm 88. <laughs> Who in the world? I haven't done it since, eight, since I was 80. I didn't do all that stuff because I got sick with this CIDP thing. But I decided about three or four weeks ago that after an invitation, of ours from Valdo. Valdo Franco has become an instructor in our principles and he's taking those principles to Brazil. That's his home. He and his wife are here now and they're te teaching courses here and work with Mustangs. And Valdo Franco has invited me to go to the biggest rodeo in the world, in Brazil. In three more months, I go there. 
And if I can, and if I'm alive, I go there. But I made a decision on my own that when I go to Brazil, I am going to do 88 at 88. And I got my, my board out, was in a, in a back closet in the house. I got my board out. And yesterday morning, I did 88. I made it to 88. It wasn't pretty, and I can just barely do it. But I have until August, I have two more months, three more months before I have to go. And those are the best bull riders in the world, tough, athletic guys. And I'm going to do 88 at 88. Chrome doesn't know about push-ups. But I tell you, it takes a pretty good athlete to sit in this saddle if he decides to work a cow like he can work. It's unbelievable the pressure he puts on. I'm going to take a break now and they're going to take the mounting block out and the line out and I'm going to show you that Chrome hasn't forgotten how to change leads. So let's try it. We'll get the mounting block out and get the line out. All right, so here's Chrome, here's me. You saw me get on him with Chrome coming to the mounting block. So you know he's intelligent. Horses have four legs. If they're normal, they have four legs. Two on each side. And they have three gates, they go walk, trot, canter. They're nor normal gates. And if they're cantering, one set of legs leads the other. If they're cantering in a left turn, the left lead reaches further than the right lead. And there's a right set of legs and a left set of legs. So if they're turning to the left, then both of these legs reach further than both of these legs. If they're turning slightly to the right, then both of these legs are reaching further than those legs. Now, that's not necessarily true. They can disunite and go left in front and right behind. Oh, oh, that's bad. They hurt themselves. They step on themselves. They don't do their work well if they can't change both leads at the same time. In the same stride, they have to change those leads. But leads are always accomplished by horses that have four legs. That's just the way it is. So changing leads is one of the most important things that a horse does because they're carrying the weight of a human being. And if they disunite, they're in trouble. And if they go on the wrong lead, they're in trouble. Trying to go to the right on the left lead is crazy. And horses take some time to teach what you want from them to go left on the left lead and right on the right lead. Let's see if he remembers. I haven't done it with him, I don't know, in years. But I'm just going to come around here, and I'm going to just tell him with my right leg to canter. And when he canters, he canters with both of the left legs. I'm going in a left circle. So both of his left legs are traveling the greater distance when measured against the ones on the right. Now, I'm going to come around here like this and then cross the center and I'm going to tell him with my left leg and he changes to the right lead. Two right leads. Here I am making a circle to the right with both of the right legs going the greater distance and getting ready for a left lead and there's the left lead. Now, watch this. I'll come down here and give him plenty of room. And here's the left lead. Here's the right lead. And here's the left lead. Holy moly. Individual strides getting individual leads. It's very difficult, particularly right and left. For the Western horse, that's almost unheard of. For the dressage horse, they do straight away changes. It's part of what they do. 
but it takes years to teach them that. And these quarter horses are very athletic and it doesn't take them as long. And then the, the quarter horse that's in the Western Division has to stop when you ask them to stop. And I don't mean sort of slow down and finally stop. I mean that you can go fast, sit down, say whoa, and have them stop poof, in one plant. And after that plant, they should relax. And if you're, if you're training your horses with violence, they don't relax so well. So nowadays, it's really changing. After the stop, sometimes they'll sit there for about 30 seconds with the reins down and the horse completely relaxed. I love to see that. And there's a fantastic lady right now sitting right near the top of the world. Sarah Dawson is her name. And Sarah Dawson is fantastic. And her father came here and did videos with me. I don't think I've ever met her. But her father came and did videos with me and he's the one that taught her to ride. And she's totally nonviolent with her horses. And she's sitting within one or two of the top of the world. And she married a young cowboy guy. And I think he's fifth or sixth in the world. And so she's showing the men what to do. It's, it's absolutely so gratifying for me to watch violence leave the world of horses. I'm, I'm just so happy with it. Okay, so I'm going to come around here now and come pretty fast over toward there so the cameras can get me. And I'll ask him to stop, relax, and then I'll ask him to turn one full circle in each direction. Okay, we'll see what he does. Whoa. Whoa. Good boy. Now watch this. Whoa. And now to the left, easy. Whoa. Now that's the first time I've done that on him. I don't know, maybe 10 years. I didn't do it, I don't believe, in your 86 video. Me at 86. I didn't do it, I don't think. But, my word, he hasn't forgotten it at all. He's a little bit rusty and fooling around a little bit. But, he will drill a hole in the ground with his hind foot and pivot over that laying an octagon on the ground with his other hind foot. And by the way, some five, six thousand years ago, the generals for the cavalries of the world taught their horses to do what they now call a pirouette. And it's done in an octagon. And that's the easiest way for the four legs to go, making an octagon with the off leg and a pivot in the ground with the near leg. Whoa. Like that. Now if you came out here, if the cameras could see, they can see a hole in the ground where the pivot foot is, and they draw little lines around here, and there's eight lines around the outside. It's absolutely incredible what we know and don't know about horses in this 6,000 years since we began to domesticate them. And imagine now after two years of not working a cow at all, we're going to bring a cow in here and see what I can do about asking Chrome to keep. Pat's going to come in and help me and we'll open this gate now, we'll take a cut and then we'll get Pat in here. I can already tell you that he knows what's coming next. He knows there's cattle over there. They can smell cattle from 
a mile away. And uh, this is Blackie and Pat. And uh, Pat has won how many championships on him, Pat? I don't know exact, but it's probably close to two dozen. Two dozen first places in non-pro? Non-pro limited working cow horse. Working cow horse classes, yeah. And so, Pat, warm him up a little bit, canter him around, stop and turn him around, and uh, we'll, we'll give you some credit. Uh, Pat, when I met her, she hadn't ridden that much. And we've been married 67 years now. And uh, in 67 years, she began riding Western Pleasure with a wonderful mare called Julia's Doll. And she won championship after championship in the Western Pleasure, because she can sit a horse, as you can see. And uh, then when Blackie came around, we retired him because of a, a physical problem he had, but I was scared to death to ride him. He was spooky and very, uh, whoo, oh, very good. He was very inconsistent with his movements, and, and I wasn't up to it. And Pat said, I'll ride him. No, you won't. You'll get hurt. Well, she's Whoa. now won two dozen championships with him, and she won a $5,000 saddle for one of her big championships that she uh, won with him. And, and he comes. I'll let you close this, Pat. Okay. And what we want to see is whether Chrome can keep this steer from banging on that gate. In other words, keep him toward the cameras. He's calling to the others now, but when he turns around and challenges, challenges Chrome, I could get some of this kind of stuff any time. We'll see what he says here. But you can see that Chrome is already, already looking at him. And as Chrome drives him up that way like you were trying to put him on a truck or you were putting him in another pen somewhere or something, then Chrome has to keep him from going the other way. Like that and that. We'll let him go, Pat. We'll get another one. Here comes another one now. They'll all look alike. I'm, I'm just touching his neck so he knows we're not working yet. I got the best helper a man could ever have with Pat here on Blackie. Let's see what this big old guy, he looks like a big old sleepy one. Now I'm putting him to work. You see, I'm not touching his neck. I'm telling him we're going to work this one. Yeah. Oh, yeah. They'll nod their heads like that, you know, saying, come on, try me. Now his ears are out there on him. And I'll just rein him through a little bit like this and you'll see him go to work. And I'll try to stop him before he gets to the fence at each side of the arena. Holy, were you? Holy moly. <laughs> okay, we'll put him out. Same procedure.
I should have had a gate put in on this side so when you warm your cattle up, you could put them out a gate on both sides. But you wouldn't think that in two times they could learn to be that tough about it. Squeeze his neck, he doesn't go. He knows it's not working time. Coming down the lane, going in. Good boy. Yeah! That's what you want. And you'll notice that when all that real tough stuff's going on, I'm, I'm just got my hand straight down. Good boy. You can tell Chrome's having fun with it. Had a boy. Had a boy. Hey. <laughs> it's a good one. Uh, it's a good one. Yeah. Okay, we'll do the last one. Coming down the lane. Coming in. Probably the last cow you'll ever work. Unless I do an 89. <laughs> but if I do it every two years, then I'd have to do a 90. I don't think I could sit on this at 90. It's funny how my body sits up here and I don't even think of how hard it is to ride, but it, normal person that rides all the time will fall off of these kind of turns and they, they, they'll be all over their horse because their body doesn't know, hasn't done it before and they don't know how to ride those kind of turns. But um, my doctor calls it muscle memory, but I don't think very many people believe that the muscles have that good a memory. Basically, this is the second time that I've worked cattle in since 2020. 2020 is when I got the CIDP. They'll just stand lazy like that and then they'll explode. Oh, yeah. Ooh, that a boy. Well, he's a kind of a funny one. It's amazing, it really is amazing, because I'm doing so little up here except just trying to keep myself in the saddle. And if I can encourage young people to become this involved in becoming one with their horse, having their horse understand what you want them to do, and having fun with it. And yeah, give them a rub and let them know when they do the right thing. 
but no clubbing on them when they do the wrong thing. Put them back to work when they do the wrong thing. And then do this and let them rest when they do the right thing. I, I'm just so proud of him and I don't know of another 19 year old that I've ever known that could do what you just saw. 19 year old horse that is. I'm not sure that I know any 88 year old man that could do what I just did, but probably, but maybe when you come back at 89, <laughs> you'll find more fault with my riding than there is today. But I had fun and not only do I appreciate this, but I appreciate those people like Queen Elizabeth II that took my nonviolence to the world. And Marty Irby, who's taking it to the world through his help in Washington, D.C. and other places. And Valdo, who's taking me, Valdo Franco, who's taking me to Brazil. And I want to do more for veterans, youth at risk, children who have trouble, family problems. We have a school for all those things right here. And Debbie has a program where horses come to be adopted for people anywhere that just love horses. And they all have different characteristics and they're retired from racetracks or they're retired from Mustangs out in the open. But they can be adopted and uh, that's what this property is all about, treating Equus properly. No violence. Violence free training. Let's have fun with it no matter where it goes. So, Pat and I are going to do a pot de do of eight. Eight full turns. And I'll say three, two, one, and on one, then we'll start to turn. Three, two, one. Pas de deux, two, three, four, five, and six, seven, eight, and stop. Whoa. 